We're here at uh, GSI Technologies. So, who are you? I'm Rick Menzel. I'm Director of Technical and Customer Service. Been with the company since uh, 2003, and I've got personally over 30 years' experience in the polymer thick film printing industry. Polymer thick film? Polymer thick film is an additive printing technology where we can add conductive oh. materials to flexible surfaces using printing techniques. And in our case, we're uh, pretty well focused on screen printing, which to some people sounds kind of antiquated, but the way we manage it and the level at which we print is very sophisticated, where we've really taken the art out of it and, and made it more of a science. So you said how long experience? Uh, personally, since I got into business in 1980. So this has been printing electronics going on for a while? Yeah, it wasn't called that back then, but we, we didn't realize we had an industry that we were starting back then, but I, I got into the business by printing electroluminescent lamps. There's a, actually an example in the case down here, the exit sign that's flashing. That's something people are very familiar with, and, and that would have been a technology where I really started my, my career path. As Does that mean all the exit lighting. lamps are like this? No, but a lot of them are. I mean, a lot of them are yeah. using what? It's not a uh, light bulb. Conventional inside. light bulbs and LED is a very popular technology. The, the people's interest in that is its power is lower than even an LED lighting system. So they get, get power savings is the real driver behind that. But and how many, the uniformity, how perfect the letters are formed. How many are using your technology? There's only a couple companies in the world that are actually trying to market that. We're, we're, we're producing the lamps for them and they have to market the finished exit sign. What does it mean, lower, lower power consumption? Lower wattage. Lower, lower power wattage, wattage off the mains power, so it's it's cost savings for the owner. Less power, less price for make it maybe in the future. Less, less price to operate and and lower maintenance cost. They last fairly long, so you get a reduced maintenance over conventional lighting sources. Is it possible to make it cheaper than conventional ones? Mm, it's it's really not a price play as much as it is a an operating cost of ownership is really where the where the the cost advantage comes. But that's that's actually a very small part of our business today. The real focus of our business are things like electrodes for glucose test strips where you're producing the functional layers inside a glucose for people with diabetes who have to test their blood sugar. This is the conductive pathway and then our customer would apply their proprietary chemistry which would be an enzyme of sorts to test points that are along the strip here and then they would be assembled into individual strips that would go into a meter. There's a handheld meter that would give you a glucose reading number. Very common You know, there's 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 tens of millions of diabetics in the world that rely on these type of technology. So you print them? Yes. All, everything we do is is additive printing technology. So you do the printers? Yes. And That's, and uh, so you are already printing millions. Billions. 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 We produce over a billion and a half of those a year. Just of these? Yes. That's one of many products we do. And so, uh, so the print electronics business is, is is already big, but it's going to be much bigger. Much bigger, and, and we're 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 in a what some consider a low tech area of it, but it's the foundation business that everything needs to be interconnected in this business. Whether you're looking at organic electronics or whatever, somehow you got to get the power and in and out of a out of a device, and that today still relies on these type of additive circuits that are silver filled, silver silver chloride carbon materials, platinum materials. Um, the real point for us is we're a, we're a contract manufacturer building to our customer's design. We don't do design work. We, we assist people in scale up and mass production of their, of, their, of their product, or at least a component of their product. So you say low tech, people consider you to be in the low tech, low, low what, tech do, what do you mean by that? Industry. Because it's it's not, the resolution is not that high, when, we when can't have much things going on? The or? resolution and when people think screen printing, they think making t-shirts. Yeah. Printing, printing T-shirts, things like that, that they just don't recognize the technology that you can bring to the printing of, of you know, using screen printing, and and the controls and the and the the specifications and tolerances that we can meet when we approach it as a manufacturing technology, not just as printing. So here are some examples. It says, uh, uh, what, this is kind of stuff that these would be, be typical. Uh, uh, devices we're manufacturing for people that range from glucose test strips to the multi analyte sensors, these others. Those are, those are, those are words that will mean something to people in the art. A lot of it we can't talk about because our customers, unfortunately, don't like us showing the products we make for them. Okay. Uh, a lot of these are large, large multinational companies, but we're testing, we have products that test for uh, cholesterol level, glucose level, uh, devices that can indicate, indicate whether or not you've had a heart attack. We have customers that are doing particle counting 
and what they call cell viability determinations, where it's able to size particles inside a fluid and also tell you whether those, those particles or cells are alive or dead. So, you know, we're in, we're in a range of, of technology areas. It's really an exciting business that way because every day we're working on something different. To take you to the other extreme, in the bottom of the case, this is an automotive seat heater. Doesn't look like much there, but that black and silver device there gets incorporated into an automotive seat, and when you press the button, it warms your, your rear end up. Instantly? And not instantly, but over time. And what's really unique with this technology is it's self-limiting that no thermostat's required, so it's extremely safe and has reduced parts count in the vehicle. So our, our products today are used in many General Motors vehicles, uh, Cadillac vehicles, uh, pickup trucks, SUVs, that we're making the seat heater component for, for those vehicles Is today. it light? And it's a lightweight product as well. Um, Is it uh, reliable for like Actually, years? one of the reasons they chose to use this technology was its reliability and to reduce warranty in seat heaters. The seat heaters suffer inherently from warranty problems because of the metal wire that's used to heat the seat up. And this technology is extremely flexible and distributes the power over a larger area and, it, and it's designed in, a, in such a way that it cannot short together. If it does fail, it'll fail open. So all you'll end up with is no heat, not with a fire in your car. Can you show this, uh, what is that? Sure, this is, uh, was actually one of the giveaways in the, uh, in the uh, bag everybody received when they came into the show. It's a printed resistor network on one side, and on the other side there's, there's thermochromic inks and then some decorative ink that, that, that uh, puts the text on there. And what it is, it's a device to test the life of a battery. If you watch, this cell will start to color. You'll see the color shift where it's going yellow. And this is a dead battery. This battery is almost, almost useless. You can see the other two cells don't change color, which would indicate okay or good. Only the replace cell is on. And it's reusable. As, as you cool it down, it reverts back. So it's a totally reusable device. And it's unique in that it can also test uh, one and a half volt batteries as well. You can see the Now this battery is almost okay. You can see that middle one is just starting to change color. It's not a quick test, but yeah. you know when you grab batteries, everybody's got a drawer full of batteries. You don't know the good battery from the bad battery. So this is a kind of a handy device for around your home. All right. So you were talking a lot about medical, but and also in the cars. Where's it going to be? All, uh... Well, the next, you know, the next frontier, and this show has definitely been talking about it a lot, is flexible uh, wearable technology. This is a, a unique situation where most of, our, most of our products are made on very rigid films. This film is elastic and stretchable, and these conductors can be elongated and stretched and still maintain their conductivity. So you start looking at things such as, I'm going to pick this up and show you, you know, a, a heart monitor, or you may be sensing perspiration or whatever, and they need to b b build these devices into clothing. And they need to be comfortable, they need to conform to the body, well, substrates like this, which is what we're usually working on, are very rigid and stiff. This is breakthrough technology where we're now working with uh, what they call TPU films, thermoplastic uh, elastomers, and then a, a matched set of conductive inks that, that provide the, uh, the durability required. We haven't proven it yet, but there's, there's talk that this will even be launderable. It will survive several machine washings. Yeah. And it's uh, good for the environment? These are pretty much safe materials. I mean, these are these are very stable materials. There is is silver in these products, and, and some countries do have concerns with disposal of silver, but that varies by country. It's uh, tough to make a general statement on that. You've got the back side, and then you've got the front side here. And what's unique is you can take something like this and, and fold it up and reopen it, and you still have a functional product. Fully functional? Yeah. It doesn't lose any? No. And so this is a breakthrough, and uh, how soon? It's a coming thing. It's it's probably you know between running more tests and and, and completing you know, all the validation work. I would say you'll start to see some products that are featuring these materials in the next six months to a year. Commercial Plus, we need products. people integrating. You know, commercial products, maybe. Yes, as you'll see as you talk to others in this whole industry, the challenge the whole industry has is is the pull of the market and and getting the application started. And I think there's enough of the, especially in this area, there's enough of the large companies, the Nikes and the Adidas's and others in the world that have applications that, 
that are just waiting for products like this to be developed or capabilities like this to be developed to realize some of the things they've been working on over the years. So, uh, what's what's possible with printed electronics? How com how complex can it be in a like uh, in a shirt? Can it can the shirt like check your emails and beep? Or what what what's going to do? Quite. There's, there there are companies here that are working on on uh, uh, thin film transistors and other organic technologies that start to approach those kind of areas. But we really see the next five to ten years is really emerging of the silicon existing silicon technologies interfacing with substrates and capabilities like this to realize products sooner. So it's like sensors, right? Yes. Sensors and then there would be somewhere to connect it with Bluetooth 4 or something? Sensing there and then there's also energy harvesting technologies that uh, companies are developing uh, chip technology that can harvest energy off your cell phone, off an NFC output of your phone is enough power to run the sensor so you won't need to wear a battery when you want to probe your, your sensor. Does that work? Yes, that's there's there's chip technology out there now that is waiting for this part to become real so they can apply it in the field. And so you just put your phone towards the clothes and then the old information yes. comes. It'll probe it, activate and get the information off of that and then it'll have a small storage device on it that provides enough stored power to run the uh, the analytics while you're running, exercising, relaxing, whatever it might be. Sounds really cool. So what do you think about this conference? This is our fifth year exhibiting and we've been members since the inception of the uh, ID TechX. And as you know, you know, where we open the discussion at, we've, we've been doing this uh, in a less organized fashion for a long time as a, as, a, as a freestanding company. And then we've seen this industry grow around us. Every year it gets bigger. Uh, every year the quality of people that we meet here improve in terms of their interest and understanding of what we and the others here do. And then we're also seeing you know, much more in the application development area. It's getting more exciting each year because you start talking about real products that are going to make it to market. And that's really what we're all about. We're we're very close to the end of the value chain. Where we're 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 next to the end of delivering a functional product to an actual consumer. So we're in, we're in the unique position of being at you know at the at the revenue end of the pipe, so to speak. So the the, the consumer will notice a big change when everything is printed electronics. I think they'll, they'll start like, to see just more things are going to pick up the intelligence, be enabled, they, they, they won't be cumbersome, you know, you won't need to be wearing a battery pack to have something work, it'll all be integrated into the, into the uh, device itself. You know, there's, there's going to be less wires, it won't be, uh, uh, you know, cumbersome in interconnects and things like that, that that some of these devices have today. And there's going to be more sensing, I mean, the world's, you know, the, the data they want to gather today, they want to sense more and more activities that we're doing, that your car's doing, that your bicycle's doing. And, and try to manage that data to supposedly improve your life. I can't exactly. promise that, <laughs> you know, but that's, that's I think, some of the, uh, the altruistic goals that some of these companies have with these ideas. And of course, in medical, they're looking at, at regular real-time monitoring of your health. And it's sharing that data with your, with your healthcare provider on a real-time basis rather than once a year when you get your physical, he'll have enough data to say, you know, you, you don't look too bad today, but two weeks ago, you were, your heart was really not working well. So there's those kind of things that could come out of this. So some of the things you said are real, and you're shipping billions. Some of the, these things are coming Much in the future. Coming, yeah. You look so, at the, the, the car seat heaters, the glucose test strips, the, the particle counting technology, uh, cholesterol checking technology, uh, blood coagulation testing technology. All those are real products we ship today every day of the week. Billions of them? And, and of some of them by the billions. Some of them by the billion, and yeah. uh, the other stuff is coming. How, can it come sooner than some people expect, or is it coming come yeah, later? So, so many of these things require a bigger cooperation of of, of, of multi levels of a supply chain to make them happen, and and also the cost is always a factor. With any any consumer product, there's always that last point of it needs to be cheaper. Such as everybody wants to make smart packaging, but your challenge there is you know a box that goes around. Uh, a bag of cereal is worth about 17 cents, and if you want to make it intelligence, it could end up costing a dollar 17 or two dollars and 17 cents. Can they find a value in that for the consumer that's going to pay for that intelligence? And so you can't just do it for the sake of doing it. There has to be some benefit and some value proposition for the end user. Reusing, recycling, or make something that has a value beyond the initial lifetime of the product. You know that it serves another purpose after you use it, or. You know, things like that are, are where some of the, the early stage things will happen, where it doesn't become a one-time use, that it's got a, a continued value. 
but that's, you know, those are easy things to talk about, very hard to realize.